Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my in-depth review of the new Tau Codex slash updated codex out today. As always, my name is Jay. And uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about the HQs in this episode. Now, um, the HQs didn't get much at all. It's an update, right? It's an updated codex, and they were kind of out front with that. Um, very few things happen in the HQ section, to sum it up. Basically, um, the commander can now be a flying monster creature, which I'll be going over in a moment. That's kind of funny and huge. But uh, besides that, no points changes at all. I should mention there's pretty much no points changes at all in this entire codex from the previous one. Um, and that the bodyguards got moved from HQ to Elite. But we'll be going over those choices. Now, the reason why I'm going to go over everything in this codex is for the new people who aren't that familiar with Tau. And they want to learn the rules of Tau. And that's why this codex, they don't have to look through all the codex reviews to find the information. They can learn all the information in this video. I'll just mention that it hasn't changed from the previous codex, but uh, I will go over them in, in pretty good detail. So we start off for 85 points, the commander. Now, the commander um, hasn't changed at all in points, cost score. It's still 85 points, still same stat line, weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 5, strength, toughness 5. Sorry, strength 5, toughness 4. 4 wounds, initiative 3, 4 attacks, initiative 10. 3 up save. This is the default, like, generic HQ that you want to get for your suits. Uh, he has a crisis battle suit, special rules, independent character, supporting fire, very bulky. And options, you can take up to 4 items from the ranged weapon support weapon lists, which are the, you know, uh, you can take items from the signature systems lists, which is the relics. Uh, may take up to 2 drones from the drones list. And a commander may instead replace his crisis battle suit with an XV-89 Cold Star battle suit equipped with high output burst cannon and missile pod for 60 points. Now this makes them a flying monster creature. Um, it makes them a flying monster creature character unit type, but does not have the fear, smash, or vector strike special rules. They also have a multi-tracker and black sun filter. If the commander has any drones, they will form a unit with him while he is gliding. While he's swooping, the drones are removed from the battlefield. If he is slain while swooping, his drones are destroyed. If a swooping commander charges flight, changes flight mode, or is grounded, his surviving drones are immediately placed on the battlefield in unit coherency with him. That's cool. That is a cool update. I like that. Because now you can have a flying monstrous creature, HQ, flying around the table. And it's kind of see, interesting to see Tau have that. It, it will add some versatility and some maneuverability to them. And uh, I think it's just going to be interesting seeing a Tau crisis suit flying around the battlefield. That's pretty cool. The commander in the Cold Star suit may take up to two items from the support systems list and up to two drones from the drones list. Makes sense. This is a there's a huge drones list. I'll cover them in the fast attack choices. And I should cover the relics after this. I forgot to cover the relics in the previous video. Up next we have the Ethereal. Still 50 points. The Ethereal is the base non-armor choice for the Tau. For an HQ. Weapon skill 4. Ballistic skill 3. Strength toughness 3. 2 wounds. Initiative 3. 3 attacks. Initiative 10. No save whatsoever. No armor save, at least. Uh, failure is not an option. Independent character. Stubborn. The innovation of the elements. At the start of each of the ethereal's movement phases, choose one of the four elemental powers. The ethereal to, and all friendly non-vehicle units within 12 inches of the Tau and Fire faction within 12 inches of benefit from the, the effects of the elemental power until the start of the ethereal's next movement phase. If the ethereal is slain, the elemental power ends immediately. One's Calm of the Tides. Effective models have the stubborn special rule. One storm of fire. They have an extra shot with pulse weapons when firing a target within half of the weapon's maximum range. This does not affect pulse bombs, pulse driver cannons, and pulse blast cannons, but includes crew rifles firing pulse rounds. Storm of fire can only affect a unit once per turn, regardless of how many ethereals invoke it. Sense of stone. Effective models have a six but feel no pain. It's going to be pretty useless with a bunch of Toughness 3 guys running around. And Zephyr's Grace affected models can fire snapshots after running. That can affect certain situations that can be beneficial. May take one of the following an Honor Blade for 5 points, two Equalizers for 10 points, a Black Sun Filter for 5, Homing Beacon for 5, which is better for deep striking, Recon Armor for 5 points, which you may want to take, a Hover Drone for 5 points, and can take two drones from the drones list. Which is that will be going over in a future video. Up next, Farsight, the uh, kind of anti orky um, I think he's the anti-orc one? Yeah, he's the anti-orc um, suit, like, character. He's 165 points, still. 
Still, weapon skill, blue skill 5, strength 5, toughness 4, 4 wounds, initiative 5, 4 attacks, leadership 10, 3 up save. He's in a crisis battle suit with a plasma rifle and a shield generator. His warlord trait is through boldness victory. Special rules, independent character, preferred enemy against orcs. Supporting fire, very bulky. And he has a signature system, which is a strength user, AP2, melee, armor, bane, close combat weapon. So that's cool. He can fight in close combat. He's actually a close combat oriented guy. You may not want to get him in close combat, but we'll see. He has, he has a choice for close combat. And up next we have Commander Shadow Sun, the other uh, character, HQ. 135 points still. Weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 5, strength 4, toughness 3, 3 wounds, initiative 4, 4 attacks, leadership 10, 3 up save. Uh, 2 fusion blasters, which are like Meltas. Advancing targeting system. Uh, and then Warlord Trait is a ghost who walks among us, which I'll be going over the Warlord Traits after this. They're the same as before. Special rules, independent character, infiltrate, shrouded, self, supporting fire. They have Defender of the Greater Good. All Stealth Shazui and Stealth Shazvu models in the same unit as Commander Shadow Sun have the Swarm, uh, the swarm Protector special rule. Options, we take a single um, Command Link Drone for 20 points. May take two Shield Drones for 20 points each. And her signature system, which is a relic, is uh, her suit, which gives her a three-up armor save, a five-up invulnerable save. Like other stealth suits, the it comes equipped with multi-tracker. Uh, and furthermore, Shadow Sun can shoot each of her fusion blasters at different targets. If she's firing while in a unit, at least one fusion blaster must be fired at her unit's target. So kind of a split fire. Cool. Then up next we have the on she 110 points. Weapon skill 5, blitz skill 3, strength toughness 3, 3 wounds, initiative 5, uh, 4 attacks, initiative 10. No save. War gear, honor blade, MP grenades, photon grenades, and a shield generator. Special rules, failure is not an option. Independent character, uh, invocation of the elements, like the ethereal. And stubborn. Uh, but it, this one's a little bit of close combat, not really. Um, blade master. Basically, it has two different stances, and each time you're in a challenge, you must choose a fighting stance, either the patient blade or the killing blade, each turn immediately before any to hit rolls are made in the challenge. If he chooses the patient blade stance, he re-rolls all failed saving throws until the end of the current phase, which usually doesn't get any. Or if he chooses the killing blade, the honor one can um, has the rending special rule until the end of the current phase, which might be helpful if you want to strike first or kill your opponent. Good stuff there. Next we have the Onva. The ethereal lets kind of on a, cr a throne in the background with its honor ethereal guard. 100 points. Gets you an Onva and, a and two ethereal guards. And the warriors, uh, the ethereal guard has an honor blade and a photon grenade. The warlord trait is exemplar of the selfless cause, which I'll be going over shortly. Special is Onva. Bonding Knife Ritual, Failure is not an option, Invocation of the Elements, Stubborn, very bulky. Great Invocations, when using the Invocation of the Elements special rule, Onva invokes up to two elemental powers per turn instead of just one. So you get two powers, you know, you can give them a feel no pain and they can uh, snap fire after running. Cool stuff. Uh, Supreme Loyalty, while Onva is alive, all friendly units with the Tau Empire faction of the battlefield reroll all failed fear, morale, pinning, and regroup tests. There's the Ethereal Guard, uh, which have Bonding Knife Ritual and Stubborn. And the signature system, or the relic of the Onva, is the Paradox of Duality. Whenever Onva's unit suffers one or more unsafe wounds from a shooting attack, roll a d6. If the result is equal to or higher than the AP of the shot. Wow. Okay. The wound is discounted, exactly as if cover save had been passed. Wounds from AP1 weapons are therefore automatically discounted. This roll cannot be made against weapons with AP dash. That's kind of cool. Keeps them alive, basically, from any AP. AP 1 or 2 guns will be pretty much negated all the time. Up next we have some cheap HQ. Uh, the Kadra Fireblade. 60 points. Gets you uh, a guy. He's uh, weapon skill 4, plus skill 5, strength toughness 3. 3 wounds, initiative 3. 3 attacks, initiative 9. 4 up save. He has a pulse rifle, a photon grenade, and a marker light. Special rules, independent character, split fire, supporting fire, and volley of fire. If the Kadra fire blade and every model in his unit 
remain stationary in the movement phase, their pulse rifles and pulse carbines each fire an additional shot in the shooting phase, which makes it pretty crazy. If you attach them to a squad with guys of like 12 guys and they rapid fire, a lot of shots, a lot of shots. And you can take any drone from the drones list. Up next, we have the Dark Strider. 100 and, oh, sorry, 100 points still. He's weapon skill 4, list skill 5, strength toughness 3, 3 wounds in shift 3, 3 attacks in shift 9, 5 up save. He's a pulse carbine, photon grenade, black sun filter, marker light, special rules, independent character, outflank, scout, supporting fire. Fight on foot, Dark Strider can only join breacher teams, strike teams, or pathfinder teams. Fight or retreat, Dark Strider and his unit can consolidate D6 inches in any direction immediately after firing Overwatch. That's nasty as heck. Before rolls for charges are made. That's nasty. Because then again, just a way to prevent the assault phase. You overwatch, then everyone else overwatches around you, and then they can move away. Or block the people charging. Structural Analyzer is his signature system. When Dark Strider targets a non-vehicle non enemy unit with a shooting attack, the unit suffers a minus one toughness against hits from that shooting attack. This applies to Dark Strider's entire unit's shooting attacks, not just his own. Use the target modifier toughness to determine if the target suffers instant death. The ability cannot be used when firing snapshots. Crazy. And that's it. So those are the HQs. Let's quickly go over the Warlord traits and um, and the relics. So the Warlord traits are as I said, the same as before. There's number one, precision of skilled hunter. Enemy models cannot take lookout sir rolls against your warlord shooting attacks. If your warlord has no ranged weapons, reroll this result. Number two, through unity, devastation. Only one use only. Declare your warlord is using the ability at the start of one of your shooting phases. For the duration of that phase, for all friendly t units with the Tau Empire faction within 12 inches, reroll one to hit. Which is, as I said, a lot of the time, you could be firing a ballistic skill like five. Hitting on twos, reroll ones. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Ghost Who Walks Among Us is number three. The Warlord and his unit move 3 to 6 inches when making jetpack thrust moves. If your warlord is not jetpack infantry, reroll this result. Number four, Exemplar of Selfless Cause. One use only. Declare your warlord is using this ability at the start of one of, of your movement phases. All friendly units with the Tau Empire faction on the battlefield that have gone to ground are no longer considered gone to ground and can move, shoot, and charge normally this turn. Huge. Especially if you go to ground behind an Aegis defense line. Number three, Predator of the Skies. One use only. Declare your Warlord is using this ability at the start of one of your shooting phases. For that phase, the Warlord and his unit have Skyfire special rule. It could help. Of course, your Warlord is a flying monster creature. That'll take care of that itself. Number six, through boldness, victory. Your Warlord and any unit he joins do not does not scatter when arriving by deep strike. If your Warlord cannot deep strike, we roll this result. And that's it. Let's go through the uh, supporting systems that are the relics because they have the same. So the signature system, sorry, signature systems are the relics. First one's called the command and control node, which uh, if a model with this war gear does not shoot in the shooting phase, all shooting attacks made by the other models in his unit reroll fail to hit rolls until the end of the phase. That's pretty nice. This cannot be used when firing Overwatch. This node can be used at the same time as a multi-spectrum sensor suite. There's the failsafe detonator. If a model with a failsafe detonator is slain in the assault phase, center a large blast marker over him immediately before removing the model as a casualty. All units, friend or foe, suffer a number of strength 5 AP dash hits, equal to the number of models from their unit with at least partially covered by the template. Unsafe wounds inflicted by this failsafe count towards determining the assault results. The multi-spectrum sensor suite. If a model with a multi-spectrum sensor suite, these are getting interesting tongue twisters, does not shoot in the shooting phase, all shooting attacks made by other models in his unit gain ignores cover. That's annoying as heck. Uh, until the end of the current phase, this cannot be used when firing Overwatch. Once again, just another way to deny cover to your opponents who need it. Repulsor Impact Field. At the start of the fight sub phase, at initiative 10 step, the Repulsor Impact Field inflicts D6 strength 4 AP dash hits on each enemy unit that completed a charge against the bear or his, or his unit this turn. Huge against orcs, tyranids, demons, imperial guard, anything of, you know, anything of lower toughness. That's really terrible against. 
Uh, Onager Gauntlet. During the fight sub phase, a model with the Onager Gauntlet can opt to substitute all of his close combat attacks for a single strength 10 AP1 attack. Cool. Neuroweb System Jammer. At the start of each enemy shooting phase, a model with a Neuroweb System Jammer can use it to target a single enemy unit within 12 inches. All shooting weapons in this target unit gain the Gets Hot special rule until the end of the, that phase. That's, again, huge. Right? You shoot it at your guy, your opponent's big net. Like, it, it's only a 12-inch range. But uh, if you targeted something with some heavy firepower, that would really hurt. Especially something like orcs with Ludas. That would be crazy. It would kill a lot of Ludas. Uh, the Puritide Engram Neurochip. At the start of the bearer's movement phase, choose one of the following special rules. Counterattack, Furious Charge, Monster Hunter, Stubborn, or Tank Hunters. The model with the uh, this neuro chip has the special rule until the start of the next movement phase. And the Crisis Iridium Battle Suit, a model with the XV802 Crisis Iridium Battle Suit, has plus one toughness and an arm save of two plus. They otherwise follow all the rules for XV8 battle suits. And that's it. Cool stuff. So that's all the HQs. I'm going to stop it here because we're at 16 minutes and it's time to stop this and uh, get on to the troops, which actually had some changes. So to sum up the HQs, no points changes. Still, solid choices for HQs, some good special rules, some good warlord traits. Um, the cool thing is having a commander that can be a flying monster creature. That's a huge benefit. And as I mentioned, the bodyguards are now in the elite slot. Not like it really matters because the um, the they're, they're part of the same formation, right? It's not like it's going to actually have an effect on your the way you put an army together. As I said, probably people are going to be running this in the, the detachment from this codex. And uh, not a standard combined arms detachment, so that's okay. Uh, I really like the commander that's on a flying monster that becomes a flying monster creature. And as I said, there is a contingent headquarters um, formation, which you can have up to one per core detachment. But there's no real special rules attached to it, so there's nothing really to go into it in the um, in this part of the review. But that is essentially everything in a nutshell. For HQ. So I really hope you enjoyed this part. Leave comments in the comment section down below what you feel about the HQ section of this codex. Agree with me, disagree with me. What do you think? I really appreciate your input. So thank you as always for watching. Stay tuned for the next part where I'll be going over the troops choices. Uh, not a lot of choices, but we'll talk about them. And until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.